So I, I was listening to um, actually during the meditation. Oh wait, I missed out. Let's see the YouTube video. Okay, there we go. Um, and I felt like a lot of energy moving. Um, and um, at some point there was just like a shutting down, like a contraction, and there were a lot of like intrusive thoughts or I could say like what felt like shameful thoughts or um, like even violent thoughts, like thoughts I didn't want to have. Mm. And just like, I don't, I don't know what happened, but it, it felt like a really intense like contraction. Mm. Um, so I'm just wondering like why or like where that comes from. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't really know the psychology of that to, to why that appears. It could be like a defense mechanism, you know, like yeah, there the, the could be a fear of not existing or not being, or a fear of change that happens. So it's like a familiar pattern that comes up. And it could also be um, neurological, like there could, it could be like, um, you know, repetitive thoughts because of the neurology, like the way the brain's set up as well. The key to it is, is that None of that is who you are. But I don't advise staying in that. Like, so if you have really intrusive or traumatic thoughts, then like change something, you know. You don't have to sit there and be like really bombarded with them because they most probably send you into trauma. Like you could I mean you can yeah. try that, like see if it passes, like see what happens if you sit there. But if it doesn't, then you can try something else. You know, you could get up and dance, you could right. put on music, you could just try other things to try and shake that off. Like sometimes it's right. good to stay in it and to look at it and examine it, and sometimes it's um it just sends you into a loop. Right. Yeah, because you were talking about lying, and I was like, maybe I feel like this is a little bit of OCD, maybe even, and I have had that in the past. But like, I was like, maybe I'm lying to myself. Um, maybe these things like I are actually things I want to do on some deep level. Yeah. And that felt really disturbing to me. Um, so I was like, yeah, I was like trying to control it or like stop it or like, yeah, it was just, um, yeah. But, uh, that's, but that, that also like, um, I'm, I'm not suggesting that's the way it is for you, but, um, when I had waking up experiences, like, um, and the, the shifts, you know, I went through a phase, it was almost like seeing how violent, like Lisa could be. And that was, maybe that doesn't happen to everyone, but that's so deep and it's really like not traumatic. Maybe it is traumatic, but it's really humbling. But I could have only have done that if I really, but I couldn't have done that if I didn't really see that that's not me, that that's like human nature of years and years of evolution of the violence of humanity coming out. Like if I thought that was me, then that would have been too much to bear. You know, I had to have been into non-duality to allow that to come up, to see that it's like, even if your body does have wants of violence at some time or, or disgusting acts or nasty acts or something, that there's nothing, you're not guilty for that, you're not shameful for that. But it can also be a habit, like a, like you say, like an OCD habit that's happening. So it's also like, like um, seeing the differences between that, like seeing when it's like a spiritual exploration of the violence that humanity has had and the ego has. Um, and then also when it's like intrusive, violent sorts that are more like OCD seeing the difference and that it's not uh, personal like there isn't a you there that's personal it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're you're gonna act them out or do it like having these thoughts right just like when you have nightmares at night it doesn't mean you're gonna act it out or do it you know like ter terrible nightmares about something yeah, it's like the mind labels it as like, oh, well then maybe I'm a psychopath, like deep down, or like, um, mm. like one of the things that came up when you were talking about lying, I was like, 
I did kind of see how like maybe I, I'm like capable of like lying to myself, and that maybe this is a victim story actually. <laughs> yeah, we're all capable of lying to ourselves. <laughs> but then like involving other people and like yeah, in like a web of lies because it's like if you if I tell myself a story about like who I think I am and what you know like what, what I think I can. Um, that uh, I think other people are wrong or I need love on some level. Mm. I could see how I play games with other people to try to, to try to get what I want from them all mm. the time. Yeah. That conversation. Cause it was really deep what you were saying. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. Like I using get... other people to get like what I want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, yeah, it's it's complex language because, like, I remember once I said to taught in a talk that I manipulate people to get what I want, and then I realised that that was too aggressive. Like, it's not that manipulation or it's maybe too much of a hard word of what we do, but everybody is trying to get what they want, um, and then there's like different tactics of doing that. There's like trying to get what you want, but open to it not going to the way you want trying to get your want it, um, trying to get what, your, what you want and then being pushy and then trying to get you your, what you want at any cost. So like, a, like, so that would include like running over other people's wants and desires. And, um, you know, and even that like I can't say what yours is or yours isn't, it sounds like you're having a lot of shame coming up. Um, yeah, and it's most probably like you're victimizing yourself, but like, um, yeah. but even if you were a sociopath, like that is perfect. Like, I don't think that you are, like, I can't, I don't know any of these, like, I don't know these things, but even if you are, that's absolutely perfect too. Like that's, that's what's got to be accepted. So there's a story of, um, the Buddha and a, gu a gun Gunamala, I will say the name wrong. I'm, you most probably heard me say this, or maybe you haven't. Maybe I haven't said it in a few years. That um, that the Buddha. So it goes something like this: that Gunamala used to work at a university, and I think he was like. Like people always send me updates of the story, so like I knew the very basic one, and all different traditions have different stories of this, but it's got the same sort of basis to it. And um, and he he used to work at a university, and then something happened where he had a falling out or there was some sort of challenge and he went and lived in the forest and he decided maybe for research at the university, I can't remember exactly, but he decided that he had to kill a hundred people and put a hundred people's fingers around his neck on a necklace. Wow. And, um, and he killed 99 and the hundredth person to walk through the forest. So he only killed the people that walked into his forest. So the hundredth person was the Buddha and everyone was saying to the Buddha, don't walk through there, Agunamala lives there and he's going to kill you and he's going to take your finger and put it around his neck. And, um, and the, the Buddha walked into the forest and said, oh, don't worry about it, it's fine. And Agunamala like chased and chased him and chased him for hours and hours and hours. And no matter how fast he ran, he couldn't catch up with the Buddha and eventually he started screaming at the Buddha like stop stop I can't keep up with you I can't catch you and the Buddha says um I am per I am perfectly still so he, no he's saying I can't catch up with you you're going too fast and the Buddha says I was perfectly still it's you that's moving too fast and then in that Amun Agulamala instantly became enlightened he, he recognized self and he um and then he became one of the Buddha's followers and walked around and followed the Buddha and I think he was his helper or his disciple and very good friend for many years after that and pe people would say to the Buddha how could you let him in he did all these evil things he killed all these people he created destruction and um, and I think the Buddha's reply would be something like he didn't do it you know right. it wasn't him that did it um, but then the next part of the story is that when they went to the villages, like people would always throw stones at Agunamala. So that was like karma from that. So even though there was a recognizing by Agunamala that he didn't do it, and the Buddha recognized that too, that it wasn't him, he still 
lived the karma of that of his actions so yeah so basically like the, the consciousness doesn't reject any personality type no matter what it does and waking up isn't dependent on goodness or badness that's in the human's world human world it doesn't mean and i'm not saying and giving permission for people to act badly and i'm not saying like if you lie and deceive people that that's what you should do i would recommend not doing that but in the end like um god or consciousness embraces everything it's total forgiveness like so even if you like did do bad things which i really don't think you did like like um well i know that i've done bad things in my life like actually i don't think that anybody's innocent in a way like we've all like uh, i think it's jesus that says everyone wants to throw stones at mary because she was a prostitute and he's like whoever uh thro who person to throw this first stone is the one that's never sinned like we've all done things that aren't so nice so we've all done right. bad acts like um but consciousness judges nothing there isn't a better person or a worse person or a more deserving person or a less deserving person the ego often wants to make out that the um the good person is closer to godliness or closer to freedom but it's not that's not true there's nothing that's more close to it or less close to it Yeah, so it's really like attributing the th thoughts that are just happening to like a self or saying that's me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right, claiming it. That's the victim mentality, I guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What I, like I think what just happened is like it's, it's just like yeah I think it's like energy was just moving shame came up maybe mm. guilt came up intrusive thoughts come up yeah um, and yeah, then totally. like not staying as the I am and then yeah. identifying with that is like that's where yeah. the that's where the fall happens yeah. yeah doing something different can sometimes help like putting on music can help in that situation yeah and moving the body mm. I think it's really important for me. Okay. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Brian. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Lisa, thank you. Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry you Christmas, too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.